I did my engineering from a college in Vijayawada. Uh, and uh, it's the same college where Ram Gopal Rama studied. So, and, and probably you know why he makes the films he makes. Because the college did have a very profound influence. Um, my college was known for its violence, uh, you know, of every kind. Uh, there was uh, violence across groups, and uh, there was a lot of politics in the, in the campus. And I, I joined this college quite unknowingly. And when I, you know, started studying there, I realized that people did not, you know, bother me. They said, "Well, he doesn't speak the local language. He looks like an NRI. So let's stay away." Uh, and then I did a small experiment uh, in the college, and the experiment was really to to do a fundraiser for missionaries of charity. And for me, you know, I was a huge fan of Mother Teresa, and I said, well, well we need to do something. So I, well, the least we could do is do a fundraiser. So we, did, we, we celebrated the birthday of orphans who lived in Nirmal Shishubhavan, which was run by missionaries of charity in Vijayawada. We got them into a campus. And I was, uh, I, was, I was in my second year of engineering, and you know, I, I took the lead for this event. And a couple of days before the main event, you know, I get this word from this group, which was known for its you know, activism. And they said, well, you know, we need to meet you. And you know, we need to so I said, now this is the time. This is the moment of truth. So I, I walk you know, over to their block, and I sort of meet these guys, and they said, and they come forward and said, well, they give a pat on my back and they said, well, you know, we've been hearing great things about you. If there's anybody out there who troubles you, let us know. <laughs> but I said, well, you know, I will for sure. And what we did was really celebrate the birthdays. And it was, it was that, you know, sort of an experiment for me. It had a very profound impact on me as a person, as an individual, to an extent where, you know, I was on my way to becoming a college dropout. But then things changed, and uh, I started. Uh, I came to Bangalore, started. Uh, I completed my graduation. That, that was a big. Uh, that was a good, good part of it. I completed my graduation, came to Bangalore, was very keen to get into the social space sooner than later. But was very aware that you know I didn't want my parents to file for bankruptcy because I wanted to change the world. So wanted to time it well. Uh, came to Bangalore, started volunteering. In one of those volunteering stints, I met my fellow co-founder, and and we moved to the UK and we started living there. And and the first three months were fantastic. You know, we you know we lived we used to live in a small village called Kidlington, four miles from Oxford. Uh, very high standard of living. And very soon we started realizing what it meant when somebody back home said India was a developing country. Because for the first time, we were experiencing what a developed state you know, felt like. And, um, and we said we need to do something about it. And we decided to, and in hindsight, it was a good thing to do, was we set a goal for ourselves. We said, well, in two years, and this was in 2004, we said in two years, we're going to pack our bags, come back to India, and start something in the, so in the social space. And in a country like India, you're spoiled for choice. You know, you can pick up any issue and spend your entire life solving it. So you're not too worried about, you know, what that issue would be. Uh, but then we were very keen that, you know, we start sooner than later. We felt, you know, while we are, you know, passionate about it, excited about it, it makes sense for us to get started. And then look back and say, that at least we tried. And so that. Uh, that led us to, um, you know, you know. Finally, 2006 came, and then we were getting restless. We said, "Okay, now what?" Uh, so by then, you know, we had you know several shortlisted ideas. So one of them uh, was about raising consciousness about child labor. The other idea was to see how we can create rural employment. And third idea was, so how do we create empathy? for India's problems by, you know, 
by Indians living in India and anywhere in the world. And the fourth one was microcredit because Mohammed Yunus and the Grameen Bank jointly had won the Nobel Peace Prize. So we got carried away as much as anybody else. And we felt our first response was, well, India doesn't need microcredit. Bangladesh is a poor country. Bangladesh needs microcredit. Until we actually Googled it and found an article on Reader which spoke about how borrowers who had borrowed from a microfinance institution in Hyderabad in 2004, some of them had committed suicide. The article went on to say that the district collector of Hyderabad passed an order saying that all the borrowers who had borrowed from this microfinance institution need not pay them back. There was a big hue and cry. Vijay Mahajan and others came rushing to the district collector and said, well, you can't pass this order. This is a sunrise industry. and." You know, you need to take your order back. The district collector said, I understand what Muhammad Yunus is doing in Bangladesh, but this is not what you're doing in, in India. Your interest rates are 50% plus. This is not microcredit. You need to do something about it. So what struck us was the fact that here is a classic case of a product designed exclusively for the poor but so expensive that the rich cannot afford it. We, we felt you know, we should do something about it. And we set up India's first peer-to-peer -peer platform to raise low-cost capital from individuals, from co you know, corporates, philanthropic debt capital, and channel it to low-income low entrepreneurs across the country. And uh, well, let's see the other co-founder. We're also related. She's my wife. And and we were fortunate. You know, we we wanted to make sure that we wanted to build a model which was designed to deliver impact. Uh, so we were very lucky. We we got a very generous uh, grant from ICSA Foundation, about 20 million uh, rupees, and over the last seven years, we've disbursed capital, we've leveraged this, uh, and we've disbursed loans to the tune of 27 million. You know, some of our borrowers whom we have really worked with, uh, Saraswati Devi stands out. She was one of our borrowers who received a loan soon after undergoing a training program in entrepreneurship. And she was so excited, you know, in her early 20s, she said, well, wow, you know, this is so wonderful. And she went on to become a a role model for the entire community. She became a mentor for 100 women in that community, and, and she trained them, coached them, and guided them. And recognition for, for that, she received the uh, Anita Sen Memorial Award from the, the state government of Jharkhand. Uh, the number of loans we've disbursed for the last 34,000, just some stats, loans defaulted, 0.3%. But I think one, one thing which is remarkable in all of this is the fact that not even one Willful borrow default we've experienced so far. So far, so there have been delays. Uh, there have been defaults for for, for reasons which are you know, extraneous. So as a, as a country, if you look at it, you know we are about even today, about not, you know less than ten percent of India's eligible population has access to credit. So when you're looking at you know you know looking at growth. Uh, as, as a sustainable nonprofit, we want raising capital for uh, you know, taking Rangde to the next level. We looked at the nonprofit route, uh, and we reached out to philanthropy, and we said, well, can you support us? And they said, well, you know, this is the time when we start our funding cycle. Could you, you know, apply and send, you know, send us a project? Very quickly, we realized that you know, they actually fund individual projects and not organizational growth. Uh, and then you know, in many in, and we also reached out to donors who who who, who gave us what they th thought was right, and not what we needed. And you know, and as a consequence, you know, and this is not just for Rangde, but if you look at you know as a as as an ecosystem, you notice that many of the nonprofits have a very you know a zigzag sort of a growth uh, trajectory. Whenever you get, with the get, they get funds, you know they scale up, and when they don't, they pretty much, you know, go back to where they were. Uh, 
ultimately they end up becoming bonsai non-profits. Uh, and, uh, and then we looked at the for-profit route. So we reached out to the impact investors, and, uh, and I, I was invited to one of these forums, and there was this gentleman who made a fantastic presentation. He said, well, we, we invest anywhere from 0% to you know, up, up to 20%. So I reached out to him after the present, his presentation, and I said, sir, you know, I'm that 0% guy. You know, can you, would you invest in me? And his question was, well, he gave you a hard look and he said, how well are you educated? Well, I said, why do you ask? He said, have you done, ha are you, you know, do you have an MBA? Well, I said, no, sir. He said, well, if you had an MBA, you would have understood that, you know, impact investing is not about 0% financial return. Uh, but very quickly we realized that, you know, uh, the for-profit rules are clearly not for us because it was all about profit, profitability, and revenue. It's all about maximizing profits. So the other thing we, we, we looked at is, was this, this whole notion of saying that you know, there's a fortune to be made as a base of the pyramid. And, and the more we looked at it, it the more you know, it was very you know, unsettling. Because, because at the very base of the pyramid, there are no markets. Uh, markets don't exist. There is no economies of scale. Uh, and therefore, how do you make a fortune? Let me give you, a, you know, a sort of a, uh, a glaring example of how you could probably make a fortune. I'm sure all of you heard of Madhubani paintings, right? So, any guess of how much a, a, an artist, a Madhubani artist, gets paid for making a A4-sized painting with natural colors? If you buy that in Bangalore, you would probably end up paying 3,000 rupees, 4,000 rupees. The artist, he spends an entire eight hours to make this painting, and he gets paid 80 rupees if it is natural colors. If it is chemical colors, he gets paid 50 rupees. Well, if you sell it for 3,000 rupees in Bangalore, you can clearly make a fortune at the base of the pyramid. Uh, so, so I think this notion is, you know, this whole idea of making fortune, I think, is misplaced. We also notice, well, that we, and the other part of this model is that, you know, cookie cutter models don't apply because in India, with its diversity, what works in one district, you know, it would not work in the adjoining district. So you cannot apply a McDonald's model, of, you know, for for, for tackling poverty. And then also, if you get it wrong, you know, there's a huge collateral damage, like it happened with SKS and you know microfinance, because you know the, the same communities you're you're trying to serve, they can come around and say that well, you know, we didn't ask you to help us in the first place, because if if at all your sole purpose is to make profit, you know, that's something which you don't. And and sadly, in, you know, as we saw in Andhra Pradesh in December 2010, about 80 bonds tragically uh, committed suicide yet again, six years uh, after that 2004 incident. So what we really need is connected philanthropy. And what is connected philanthropy? Connected philanthropy with empathy. Uh, that, that's very important. And then you know, what we did really was to uh, you know, look out for you know, growth capital, and we reached out to Mohamedana's thinking on this, which is, Business with empathy, which is a social business model. Uh, it's it's got a you know the goodness of the for profit, the doggedness of the non profit, and you know it's it, we we call we call it the social equity model. So essentially, a social business is one which has got one bottom line. So you're trying to solve. A uh, if it is malnutrition, it's malnutrition. If it is uh, environment, environment. Uh, and, and you measure yourself against this. No doubt, you know, the business has to be sustainable. But then your focus is to maximize social impact. And it's a non-loss making. It's a profit, traditional non-profit. It doesn't survive on growth. Uh, but it, you know, it's, it's non-dividend paying as well. So it ensures that the, 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 the focus of the investors uh, and, the, uh, and the organization is aligned. And you could also have impact-based valuation. Uh, 
And this is how it might look like, you know, once, once you have impact-based valuation. Uh, and this is how an investor might get his report, saying that, you know, that this is how many people have to credit. Uh, because because it's, it's, it, we're still far, far away where, you know, India should be. And I'll talk about that in a bit. 18% of Indians have zero assets. This works out about 215 million people. Zero assets. They don't have even a mobile phone, even a television set. Uh, that's the number we're talking about. 26% of children under the age of five are not immunized. Uh, 48, oh, sorry. The, uh, well, the, that's the immunization number. And this malnourished under the age of five, 48%. 66% don't have sanitation. So, so what really we need is entrepreneurs who have this drive to solve the problem and not give up until they actually solve the problem. Um, here are some examples. Sonal Kapoor is a founder of uh, Prothan India Foundation. She works with slum children, girls uh, in, in, in slums of Delhi. Uh, we have Mahesh. These are you know young social entrepreneurs whose sole focus is to solve the problem at hand. And, and clearly, you know, we have Dr. Vergis Korean, uh, the founder of uh, Amal, who has been a pioneer. Uh, and, 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 and just that all of you know, he started when he was 28 years old. It, it was quite an accidental, you know, uh, journey into the, into the world of, you know, setting up the, the dairies and working with the far 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 farmers. And then you have Dr. Govinda Pa Venkat Swami, the founder of uh, the legendary Arvind Eye Care Hospital. So, all I would say is this: that you know, all of us, you know, take up, make this resolve today that you know, we're going to do something about solving one of India's problems. It could be tomorrow. It could be a few years down the line. Then I would love to see an epitaph like this. Thank you.